Do you ever think writing content for Google is like a massive mystery? What's the magic sauce? How many words is enough? Where do I put the keywords? Well, I'm going to give you a very simple guide that's going to walk you through the key elements that Googlebot is most concerned about. Those triggers are going to make your pages findable. Today we're going to talk about how to write truly findable copy that's both findable and creative. There are some key things that I've learned through working with hundreds of content writers through the years on some quick and easy tips on how to write great findable copy that also grabs them and converts them. So I'm going to give you kind of my cheat sheet, my short list of ideas. So the first one in creating findable content is you must understand there are different kind of readers. There are skimmers where I just do, 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 do. I just look through all the down the page and I decide what I'm going to take in. There are chunkers where I'm going to stop with each chunk and I'm going to evaluate each chunk on the page. And then of course there's just readers. Those are the like the lowest percentage that will read every single word on the page. So it's important to understand when you're writing, it's not just paragraph, 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 that is boring, boring, boring. You want to make sure that you're mixing it up a little bit, that you've got the skimmers, the chunkers, and the readers all covered. Very important. The next is take advantage of good punctuation, like check, check marks, bullet points. These also create what we call eye rest. Oh, I need a place for my eye to rest and stop. If you have tons and tons of content, there's no place for your eyes to rest. Use the bullets and check marks very carefully to create open space, if you will, on the actual content for your eyes to pause and rest. The next one is don't just write all this content and expect them to do what you want them to do. My recommendation is write the first paragraph, then have a call out statement. Have you read enough? Are you ready to take action? Click here because people will not read all of the content. They'll get excited by the headline. They maybe get real excited about the first bullet, but oftentimes they just want help at that point. So put it right into the, bake it in to the content so that they know that they don't have to read the whole thing. You're going to be there for them regardless. Bold and underline. Use this very, very strategically. The bold and underlined uh, formatting options are very much overused. Judiciously use bold only on things you want their eye to stop and rest on. Same for underlines. Be consistent in how you're using them across your content. Remember, when you come to a page, let's see, this is a page in a newspaper or in a magazine. Now you'll see here that we've got a number of different things that people will look at. They're going to look at the images, of course, that's the thing that we love pretty pictures. We're always going to look at images first. Now, if you squint your eyes on it, okay, there's the burgers and bourbon, that's the title. Here we have these fantastic images. So I haven't even read anything yet. Now I'm going to go back. Once I've been sold by these images, now I'm going to go in and look at the copy. And you'll see they've done a great job of balancing imagery, headline, and text. So when you're thinking about writing a page of body copy, you guys have all seen those pages that are just like, copy after copy, it just goes scrolls and scrolls and scrolls. That's really old school SEO copywriting. You want to think more now about user engagement and relevance. Make sure that you know what keyword you're going to write about, that you're being mindful of the kinds of content you're creating when you write it. As of course now, you're also going to make sure to pick those great images that sell the story. Don't just throw up any stock photography here. Take out your cell phone. When you're walking around and you see something that inspires you, snap a shot. Upload that to one of my favorite tools. So when we're thinking about what else can we create, I've got a couple favorite tools of mine. The first one is Canva. Canva.com. This is what I call the Photoshop killer. <laughs> you don't ever need Photoshop again because this has all the presets. So when you're thinking about creating images for that SEO content, you want to create something that is very specific in size. So when you go to share it out to Instagram, it's going to look great on all those portals, but also it looks great on that page. Another one is Rev.com. Rev.com is a transcription service. So you can interview someone, they can dictate to you, you can walk around and talk into your smartphone, record that, upload that to Rev.com and you'll get an instant computer uh, transcription. 
you will also get a human transcription in a, in a couple hours after that. So pretty fantastic how quickly you can create content. It's, it's, it's a wonderful way to just rip out lots and lots of content based on the keywords you want to rank for. Now Pixabay is great because, you should see this, because it gives you royalty-free copy of royalty-free artwork that has been approved by the photographers. Photographers take pictures, they can upload them onto Pixabay and give usage rights. So as long as you give them a credit, you don't have to pay for the royalties on the licensing on those images. And they've got tons of great images. And keep in mind too, when you're looking for images for your content, think about the emotive response. So you type in smile or sad or frustrated and you'll get much better imagery than just typing in like girl standing in front of tree. Remember the, the images are the emotive quality of the article. They're the ones that add that imagery to the site. Love that. Another one I love here is word counter. Dot net. This lets you put any piece of copy in. It will count exactly how many words is in there and you can also get a bunch of other goodies from it. But the words are what's so important. And if I need to hit a word count like 1500, then I need to have something easy. You can also do this in Word, but I like Word Counter. It just seems to be a little more intuitive. Now why this is such an amazing tool is that it will grab all of those searches related to. So when you're on Google and you're searching for a keyword phrase and you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see a bunch of, of suggested searches underneath that. Those are the things you want to weave into your body copy when you're writing. So my recommendation is when you're sitting thinking about writing something, pop open your Google screen, so pop it open, type in the keyword, and then try to interview yourself based on what's on that page. You will see questions, you will see additional phrases, you will see experts in that industry. And if you can focus on just talking about what's already in play on a Google search result page, whew, that is huge. Google loves you because not only you have you include the keywords on there, but it's contextually relevant to what's already on a search result page. That is truly what makes content findable. Use some of my tricks and tools, but at the end of the day, if you're, if you're bored, your content will be boring and it won't convert. So find a way to have fun creating content. Use tools like Rev to, to be able to dictate or go and interview somebody and then have it transcribed. Don't suffer for findability. No suffering in findability. Have fun with it and people will resonate with your content and they will convert and your content will rank. That's one of the most important things is write for them, not for you. Well, I hope I inspired you now to write content that people care about and Google will love. Don't forget that if you subscribe to our channel, you're gonna get ongoing recommendations, tools, tips on how to become the most findable business online. So make sure to subscribe, hit the button right next to it so you get notified of our daily videos. We'll see you on our next call.